Texas and our first night here, just got here, stopped at the hotel, dropped our bags off, ordered the Uber and we are heading downtown. So this first place we're going to check out is called the Firehouse Lounge and it's kind of a speakeasy environment so I think we have to open up a bookshelf or something to get to it. So this speakeasy is legit. If you want an excellent mixed drink, you gotta stop in here. Sorry guys, I gotta go handheld. My gimbal just died, so hey, here it is. So I stopped by the Museum of the Weird, and unfortunately, they don't do night tours. I'll save that for tomorrow. It's like a pretty gnarly blockhead routine. It's a sideshow history and oddities museum. So we have taxidermied animals, shrunken heads, mummies, items from the sideshow period that would have traveled the U.S. during the sideshow period. And then we have a live performance um, of sideshow performers uh, between blockheads, paranormalists, uh, human oddities. And then we have a wax museum of monster movies like Nosferatu, Dracula, King Kong, uh, that you can actually get in his hands and pose with. So this burger is like ideal, perfect night food. Oh my God, it's so tasty. Just waking up, our first full day in Austin. And let me tell you, I need some coffee right now. So we're heading to Revival Coffee House and grabbing some coffee, maybe even a sandwich. So let's check it. checking out. Um, also, we're hoping to have beer and wine in about a month, so we highly recommend coming back for that as well. All right, caffeinated, I head back to the Museum of the Weird for that tour and that sideshow performance. years old. It is one of the oldest buildings in Austin. It does just look like this back here. Except for that, we added that. That's funny, it's a neon sign. Uh, the trap door most of you stepped over is just part of the building. I'll open it up for you. Ah. It's dirt! Disappointment! So it's full of dirt because all these old buildings do connect to the tunnel system underneath Austin. There are tunnels that go out in five miles of a direction from the Capitol building. They're used for prohibition, politicians, brothels, brothels to politicians, politicians to brothels. You guys get what I'm saying. Now if you note over here, you'll see there's enough room for a six foot tall person to crawl on his hands and knees. 
friend Jeffrey tried to dig it out. I thought Jeffrey got to the garbage can. Jeffrey got to the street. Jeffrey should be dead. Uh, all we found were those three horseshoes up here. We used to sell uh, mules out of here about 100 years ago. Other interesting thing, no, if you fall in, we get to keep you. <laughs> you don't want me. Good answer. <laughs> now, other thing. There's a pirate at the front of the store and a pirate back here. The reason for that is a very famous pirate used to live in this building. Does anybody want to guess who? Two guess, two hints. He's not a real pirate and he's paid by Hollywood. <laughs> yes, Captain Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp. During the 1991, join me. During the 1991 filming of the movie Gilbert Grape in Austin, Texas, Johnny Depp did want to live downtown. He wanted to drink and he wanted to play music. He lived behind this store here. I'm going to pause here for your moves and your odds. Your first stop's going to be the Wax Museum. Welcome, welcome. A few quick rules, everyone. Steve, the owner of the museum, has collected these figures from uh, different museums that were selling them. Uh, a lot of them he's actually dressed himself. And this one over here, the Vincent Price figure, was actually modeled after the owner himself. This is the only one that he built the body um, himself. So for this figure right here, he literally had to get in this position. Yeah. for the cast. The guy who played the gill man and the creature from the Black Lagoon, um, the guy who played the, the diving parts, had to hold his breath for four minutes at a time, not without creating any bubbles for the shots, which is pretty incredible. It's very hard to do. The wolf man up here, uh, played by Lon Chaney Jr., which is Lon Chaney's son. Um, his makeup actually took over three hours to put on and over three hours to take off. The original vampire, my personal favorite, um, the man who played Nosferatu, Max Shrek, was actually put in an insane asylum after the movie. Um, a rumor was started that he actually was a vampire because he played the part so well and he was actually very weird on set. Of course, they put people away back then for a lot of different reasons. They could have put him away just because he was such a good actor. <laughs> um, also, Max Schreck was his real name, and Schreck in German means horror. So these three figures right here um, are all of Lon Chaney from the silent era of horror films, also known as the Man of a Thousand Faces. He did his own makeup and often did very crazy, painful things to himself to create many different looks. To play Quasimodo, he actually glued his eyes shut and wore a 40 pound weight on his back, giving himself permanent back damage. To play the vampire in London after midnight, he flipped his eyelids inside out and taped them down. Um, London After Midnight also is one of the most legendary films ever lost. It was lost in the MGM vault fire. Boris Karloff as the monster. And Bela Lugosi as Dracula. Um, Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi were huge rivals back then. They both were fighting for the king monster of Universal Pictures. Boris Karloff was much more successful. Uh, Bela Lugosi was heavily typecasted as Dracula, but he also loved being Dracula and would make appearances as Dracula everywhere. He was even buried in his Dracula cave. That we got the pieces from Florida from a sandwich, a sandwich shop. Okay. <laughs> and had yeah. to yeah. carve the sandwich out of his hand. The man who did all of the monster makeup. Mm. Um, the interesting thing about him is that he basically created the Frankenstein look, or the, mon the look of the monster in Frankenstein. Uh, nowhere in the books does it describe his looks. It doesn't say he has like the bolts in his neck or the green makeup. That was all Jack Pierce's creation. And this is Prince Randian, who was um, in the movie. He was born without limbs, 
and his sideshow performance was that he would roll his own cigarette and smoke it. He also would shave, and that was his performance. <laughs> So 
it's my real job, it is how I pay my bills. If you enjoyed the show, if I made you laugh, if I made you cry, if I made her very uncomfortable, please throw something in the bucket. You'll be genuinely helping me and helping me not have to do this anymore. But I get something out of this no matter what. The looks on your faces when I put stuff in mine is why I started doing this. Now, nobody worry. I do take Devin credit. So, why? For three years, I was a waiter at the Olive Garden. Yeah, yeah, now you guys understand why I'd rather tase myself in the face than wait yeah. Once I had a guy yell, I'm a manager at an Olive Garden, I said, this is the future. Yeah. All right, here we go. We start thinking about how stupid this is, it gets scary. Oh wait, one more thing. So, oh, my hair is not going to poof out, my eyes are not going to spark. I am just tasing myself in the face for your entertainment. I had a kid last week yell, that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So with that in mind, I want to taser one now, my face. Museum of the Weird Austin, Texas. Good morning, everybody. <laughs>
I'm Jack. I work here at Malone's Coffee in Austin, Texas. Um, so we serve up um, locally sourced organic coffee every day out of the food truck. It's kind of an Austin thing. Um, yeah, and I mean, we're pretty much here just uh, keeping the uh, keeping the city caffeinated. So that's it, dude. So I just picked up a Austin Dream. Mmm, tasty. Location, what we do here is just pretty much like just be ourselves and just give what we have. Uh, creativity is the name of the game, and what customers usually get. Uh, can expect is just like, you know, nothing but themselves, you know, talking to other people and just getting a, the taste of what creativity is, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm yeast and I love it. Like, I always come to work and it's like, always fun. And I like, people will hear our music, obviously I'm a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, but sometimes you'll just walk in on like a four o'clock, you know, morning and then you'll just hear like death metal. But like, family friendly and all that stuff. Uh, it gets crazy. It goes to the line. The line goes all the way to the door and we'll be slammed, but it's honestly like the best time of the day. Uh, inspiration is uh, right there on the wall, Alejandro. He is our uh, donut guy. Um, but yeah, pretty much the inspiration is just like, you know, four key designs that are just meant for like all year round, like entertainment. So like, we got the blue donuts. Like we don't always like make the same thing. Deco in the back, they will do their own thing. Like sometimes I'll go in the back and I'll make a cat head. Just that's that's whenever we feel like it. It's honestly what we decide what we want to put on it, and people usually like it half the time. I gotta say, keep Austin weird. Yeah, that's literally all I have to say. Great. So let's dive right into these donuts. These are what they suggested for me. Starting off, we got the classic, classic, iconic voodoo donut. Hey ghouls, creeps, and undead peeps, this is Joey Slane, and welcome to the Glass Coffin Vampire Parlor. We are a uh, vampire themed shop located in Austin, Texas. Uh, we are the Bat City, and inside the shop you'll find an array of vintage items, macabre, curiosities, antiques, some taxidermy items, wet specimens, and we also have a seance room where we're going to begin uh, seance classes and seances as well as wet specimen, taxidermy classes, and things of that nature. Uh, you'll find just pretty much anything dark, macabre, a good array of like candles, incense. So come on into the glass coffin. There's a lot of photo ops. You can take a picture in the Baroque chair that we have for every vampire, queen, and king. And uh, just stop in and you'll have a great time.
welcome to Boulder Creek Cafe. Uh, we've been open since the year 2000. Uh, we've been at this location since 2008. We originally started across the street. Um, we were there for about eight years and the place just really blew up. The locals loved it. We were at a point where we had a line out the door just about every lunch shift. Uh, so when the time came to expand and bigger, we moved into what was now an ex car shop. So you can see we kind of pay homage with the tires on the wall, which serves as uh, uh, sound eaters. But uh, that we've been uh, vegan vegetarian since the time we've opened. Uh, we are just looking to sell kind of comfort food, kind of give a nice diner experience to those with a good Austin feel. Um, we've had all sorts of uh, people from the community dine with us. Uh, it's been an awesome experience and we're still going strong. Now, could you tell me what separates this gym from your typical gym, your average gym? Uh, just about everything, man. Atmosphere, just the availability of everything that we have to, to do. Um, our ability to meet you wherever you're at from a work capacity standpoint, fitness history, again, even if not. Um, it's very goals-oriented, goals-driven, but also there's a focus on uh, durability, longevity, making sure people are getting to where they need to be, but in a way that's going to be sustainable, safe. As far as the general fitness stuff, sports performance, um, all kind of your usual fat loss, overall movement capacity, all those goals. Um, and then for real specific, we've got uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, uh, got uh, uh, wrestling classes that go on, Gi Jiu Jitsu, all, all kinds of stuff. I mean, the, the experience they have working with people at, a, at an extremely high level. So uh, we've had UFC veterans in here, military vets. Uh, a lot of those are the same people like Tim Kennedy, for example. Um, been working with WWE guys, NFL, MLB, kind of you name it. Our, our guys have uh, worked with them in, in some capacity. Shoots because you know me, gotta do photo shoot pretty much everywhere I go. 
and um, oh yeah, we found these amazing steps here. Oh wow, look at this amazing, oh, perfect. And uh, yeah, now we're just chilling, you know, taking it easy. Probably gonna be heading back to the hotel. We'll regroup, get centered, get our our cell phones charged and all that stuff. Get more batteries for this camera, all that kind of stuff. So I was just chilling out now and then probably heading out later, seeing what goes down. What up? <laughs> dressed on top and it's a Detroit style pizza. Oh yes. So Monday night in Austin, <laughs> not much going on. Streets are pretty barren and so are the bars. Oh, and also found Angelina Eberly, the Austin badass. Definitely check that out on the History Channel. She's pretty crazy. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. For more odd ventures, check them out at www.catacomb.tv.